In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to complete the in-class exercise assignment of UV unwrapping an object more complicated than a six-sided cube. In Blender, it starts off with the default cube. If I left-click on the object in object mode, it is highlighted in orange. If I press tab, then I'm in edit mode. I can press three, and I'm in face mode. E will extrude, and I can extrude straight out. Press S to scale, scale it down, then E once more, and then again. I can click this top face, press E to extrude, perhaps scale it down a little bit, and then E to extrude again. Once I have an object that is more complicated than a cube, I can now go to UV editing. This is the UV editing workspace. In Blender, you'll see whatever face you select on the right highlighted over here on the left. If I press A to select everything, notice that it's the default cube layout. It only has six sides, yet my object has many more. UV unwrapping allows the UV texture space to match what my object is. One of the easiest ways in Blender to unwrap something is simply click UV, Smart UV Project, then click OK. This is very similar to using the automatic projection in Maya. The downside of this is you don't necessarily have full control over which objects are close together. For example, I may want to cut one of these angle pieces in order to keep some of the other parts together for texture mapping. Another way to UV unwrap in Blender is to be in edge mode. Right now on the right, this is edit mode. If I press two or click this icon, it's in edge mode. Then select different edges that you want to make into seams, hold the shift key, if you hold Alt or Option, you can select more at one time. You can orbit around, hold Shift, Alt, or Option, select more edge loops, then right click, Mark Seam. Now you can see the seams are marked in red. This is where Blender will unfold this object. I probably want to go ahead and mark this one as well. So I'll right click, Mark Seam. Now press A to select everything, UV, Unwrap. Now it unwraps the way that you wanted to. Here you can see that I'm not using as much of the texture space, so I may want to create some more seams. And also up here, it's not fully undistorted. So this will have some distortion when I apply my texture. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and press A, UV, Smart UV Project, and click OK. This is a pretty good method of maximizing texture space and having all your objects laid out. How do we assign a new material to this object? Instead of being in edit mode, go to object mode by clicking in the top or pressing tab. On the lower right, this red ball is the material tab in Blender. Click it, and then instead of using the default material, click the minus sign to delete it. Click new, and then this material, label my material. Under base color, click this little yellow dot. Then click image texture. Then click Open. Then select the texture image you want, in this case, the shell texture. Now the texture is applied, but we don't see it. In order to see it, we need to scroll up at this top menu and make sure we click Material Preview. Here we see the shell texture applied, but because of the way the UV is unwrapped, we don't see it seamlessly going from edge to edge. This is why you may want to use Mark Seam. So for example, if we want to make sure that all of these pieces are laid out properly, we don't want them to have a seam. Now this may create some distortion, but it's a compromise that one has to make to be able to have the image be the way they want. For example, go back to edge mode, then we can select the different pieces that we want to have. Press A to select everything, then right click clear seam. Now we want to make a seam going around the back edge. Hold shift and option, and select all the edges going around the back. Right click, mark seam. Then if you press A, select everything, UV, unwrap, it will unwrap and you'll get a seamless texture. So for example, looking at this, the texture is much more seamless on the front, but there are distortions. It's always a balance between whether or not you need something to be seamless versus distorted. UV wrapping is always a compromise. You have to do whatever is best for your particular application. Now let's see how we can add a bump map to this. Over in the material section, scroll down where it says normal, 
click on the purple dot. Then select Bump under Vector. Now we need to go to the Shading menu. Click Shading in the top middle. This is all the nodes that are for shading in Blender. Make sure to off click so everything isn't selected, then move Bump down. You can click the shell texture, press Command or Control C to copy, then Command or Control V to paste, move it down, and then drag color to height. Instead of the shell texture, we actually want to use the bump map, so click the folder and then select the bump map. As you can see, now we have a bump map texture on our object. The next thing to do is to go back to the layout menu, click material preview, and then if we want to look through the camera, click the camera, this little arrow or the N on your keyboard, and then click view, and then camera to view. This allows you to move the camera around in the viewport and see what you're going to get in your render. If we look at render preview, Blender comes with a default light, so we can add more lights to Blender by pressing Shift A, light, and then we could add a sun, a point light, or an area light. Let's add an area light. Press G, Z to move it up, G, Shift Z, and then we can press R, Y to rotate it towards the object. Notice that there's not a lot of brightness, so if we click on the light, we can increase that power until we have enough brightness. Then orbit your camera around until you're happy with the view you're going to get. You can decide if you want to shade smooth by clicking the object, right click, shade smooth, and you can subdivide it by clicking on the modifying keys, add modifier, generate, Subdivision surface, two subdivisions. On the backhand side, you can see where the seam from the UV unwrapping is. But if I orbit around to the side that we kept seamless, it looks pretty good. Go ahead and orbit, add other objects to your scene, perhaps a plane on the bottom by pressing Shift A, Mesh Plane, G, Z to move it down, S to scale, and then we can click Render, Render Image. By default, it's going to render in Eevee. If you want to change the render, click over here on the camera and then select Cycles. To decide how big your render is and where it's going to output, click the printer. It defaults to 1920 by 1080, but the output directory is temp. You may want to select a more appropriate directory, such as a project directory, by clicking this folder. Now, if I click Render, Render Image, we can see the image rendered in cycles. Hopefully this helps you UV unwrap your object for the in-class exercise and make two render images in Blender. Happy 3D modeling.